Lissa Productions. Today we're going to be doing Lab 11, which is looking at the transition from analog to digital electronics. Analog electronics basically allows us to have continuous voltage, any voltage level we want, whereas digital electronics has discrete voltage levels. Typically, that's two voltage levels, but it could be more than two voltage levels. So we're going to be looking at several circuits here. The first one is a so-called adder circuit, and we'll put that on the board here. It's based on our op amp, our input. So the adder circuit is, is here. It's based on the 411 op amp. And it, we have the non-inverting input grounded. And we have two voltages, V1 and V2, through resistors R1 and R2 going into the inverting input, and then a feedback. And this is known as an adder circuit because the output voltage is essentially the sum of the two inputs. It's minus RF over R1 V1 plus RF over R2 V2. And if we set all the resistors to the same, then these would just become one, and it would be the negative sum of those two inputs. We're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to be setting V1 equal to 5 volts, and V2 is going to be either 0 volts or minus 1 volt. And we're going to do that with a square wave here. So let's, let's take a look at those waves for a second here. So our relationship between the output and the input voltages, input voltage V1 is fixed to 5 volts, V2 is either 0 or minus 1 volt. And we're going to do that with a square wave on our function generator. So we'll set it up to be 0 to minus 1. And remember the way we do this is we set the offset, OFFS, to be minus 0 0.5 volts. So we set it here, and we set VPP to be 1 volt. And then we get a signal that looks like this if we set up a square wave. That's the input here. The output we want to be a square wave that goes between 0 volts and minus 5 volts. So you've got to analyze this circuit and figure out appropriate values of the resistors to make that work. And you'll also have to figure out, is the minus 5 volts going to be when the signal's at minus 1 volt or when it's at 0 volt? You'll need to figure that one out. In the second part of the lab, we're going to combine the R2R ladder that we had way back at the beginning of the semester, which I've sketched a two-stage R2R ladder here with the adder circuit to build a so-called digital-to-analog converter. R2R ladder, just a reminder, 5 volts coming in. We have 2.5 volts here. It's divided by 2, 1.25 volts here. If we added more stages, we'd keep getting divided by 2. And we've got switches here that we can either connect these to ground or connect them into the circuit. So if we put this into the circuit here, then we get 2.5 volts, and we'll get minus 2.5 volts out. We click this one in as well, we'll get the sum of those two. So that's the idea of this adder circuit. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to basically build a four-stage one. So there's th four switches. And they can be either 0 volts or whatever the voltage is. And there's some output voltage. And we want to record for various switch settings what the output voltage is. So maybe we'll put one there and so forth. And we want to basically build up this table from this circuit here. So we can basically click in and build up a set of output voltages with these switches. That's based on our R2R ladder. In the next part of the lab, we're going to be building a simple comparator circuit, which is, again, based on our op amp, 741. And I've explicitly drawn VCC and VEE here, just so we remember that they're there. Those, in our case, are plus 12 volts and minus 12 volts. And the comparator here basically looks at some reference voltage we set and the input voltage. And V out equals VCC if VN is smaller than the reference voltage. And V out equals VEE if VN is greater than the reference voltage. So if we look at this on a plot, basically draw, let me put some triangle wave input in here. 
So there's Vn. Let's say this is our reference voltage. This is across here. And every time the triangle wave crosses the reference voltage line, we're going to make a transition. So here, the input voltage is below the reference. So we're going to have VCC out. We cross it. It's going to go to VEE while we're here. Cross it again. It's going to go back to VCC and so forth. So we're going to look at the input and the output of this and basically make a plot. The important thing about this comparator is it's exactly the same reference voltage that causes the transition. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to modify this circuit slightly to build a so-called Schmidt trigger. So let's take a look at that. So the Schmidt trigger here is a very slight modification on the comparator. The main thing is we have a positive feedback resistor coming from the output voltage into the non-inverting input. Input still goes into the inverting input. And I have put a voltage divider here so that we have some intermediate voltage between some voltage level we set. This is actually going to be a potentiometer that we can then adjust the, the setting there. And the interesting thing about this is there's two possible output voltages, VCC or VEE. If the output voltage is VCC, then we have one voltage level here. We call it VA. If it's VEE, we have VB. And VA is bigger than VB. So depending on the output, we have two different comparator voltages here. So we have a slight modification here. We have our, we're going to talk about our triangle wave input again. So we'll put our triangle wave into this. And now there are two threshold levels, VA and VB. And these thresholds determine when things are happening. So when we go up, we have to cross VA for it to switch to the VEE state. And when we're going down, we have to cross VB for it to switch back up. So the transitions occur at different levels here. And this allows us to be less sensitive to noise with this comparator. We don't sit around with, if there's noise bouncing back and forth between levels. So this sort of plot that we'll see on the scope is going to be the important plot here. So here we're set up for the simple adder circuit where we have a, a square wave, one volt peak to peak, minus half volt offset going in. And we've got the op amp here with the various feedback resistors. And I'm looking on the scope at the input signal. So this should be going, and you can see it here, it goes from zero volts down to minus a volt. It's very important that you check this because there are values of resistors that you could choose that might cause this to be distorted. And if this is distorted, then the output, which I'm not going to show you because that's going to give away the answer, will also be distorted. So make sure you check the input that it really is going from zero to minus one volt. And then I just will hook the output up to this yellow cable here and I should be able to see the signal going from zero to minus five volts on the output if I've got that hooked up correctly. We can then modify this by putting the R2R ladder on here and the switches to build the sort of the digital to analog converter. And I'm not gonna show you that here. It's basically the same op amp, so you know how to set that up. Here we have the simple comparator circuit hooked up. Um, I've got the threshold voltage. It's actually going through this potentiometer. I've got a triangle wave input coming in, and you can see it on the yellow wave channel here. And the output is the blue channel. And basically, the threshold level is controlled by, if I adjust this potentiometer, and the key thing you want to see is that there's a transition happening at exactly the same level. It goes up, it goes down, goes up, goes down, goes up, at exactly the same voltage level, no matter where I set this. So I change the voltage level, I make the threshold higher on the triangle or lower on the triangle, by adjusting this, but it's at the same level with that comparator. The Schmidt trigger is a slight variation. I put a feedback resistor in, so let me just see if I can get this right here. And now you can see a striking difference here with that feedback. There's two different levels. It makes a transition to a high level here and a low level there. It separates those two. And as I adjust this, you can bring them closer together, but they generally stay separated. So the key feature here is the transition to go down is at a high level and to come up is at, a, is at this lower level here. So that's the key feature of the Schmidt trigger. So you'll be building both of those circuits and as you can see there's virtually no difference. It's just a resistor between those. 
so just to summarize what we've done in lab 11, we're looking at a little bit of analog and a little bit of digital electronics. So we start out with an adder circuit and build a circuit that lets us take discrete digital levels, which is provided by an R2R ladder, and provide an analog or approximately analog output. We then go and look at a transistor switch where we can see basically a transistor as an output of, of one, either a zero volt or a five volt, and measure how fast that can happen. And then we move into comparator circuits where we have basically a simple comparator and then we generalize it to a Schmidt trigger where we've got a positive feedback resistor to make us less sensitive to noise. So go ahead and work on this in the lab. <laughs>